I'm now going to go through a derivation of the range equation. So one thing to remember, this is only true on flat ground. And where that actually comes in is that we say that our initial height and our final height is the same. So this is where that comes in. Now, I'm not actually drawing a picture here, though, mostly to save space. And this is not really doing it out as if it was problem solving, but to just do out the derivation. So again, there's many pictures related to this. So we have our x initial here, and then we have x final here, which is what we're saying is equal to the range. So we're just defining our initial position as 0. That's very convenient. And we're going to say that we have some initial launch velocity. And we're going to say that it, of course, has a magnitude and some angle. So what we want to do is relate this final range to that initial launch velocity. And we can always define, in this case, our initial component in the x as v0 cos theta and our initial component in y as v0 sin theta. So the next thing you want to do is go and get those kinematics equations for two-dimensional motion when you have constant acceleration. Now, in a previous uh, projectile motion video, I showed you how we can go from the general form down to the specific projectile motion form, where we've plugged in negative g for acceleration in the y direction. So we've already used the fact that our acceleration in the y direction is negative g, and that our acceleration in the x direction is zero. So that's true for projectile motion, and I've already plugged that in. So I have my equation in y, and I have my equation in x, and remember that delta t is the thing that brings them together. Now, in this case, I don't know how much time it spends in the air. I also, in a way, don't care. What I want my range to depend on are v0 and theta, and it's also going to depend on g. I don't actually want it to depend on delta t. If delta t is in your answer, in this situation, you're not done. It's not something that you know. So what do we need to do? Well, let's plug in some of these values into our equation. So in this case, I've plugged in my y final into the left side and my y initial into the right side. My Remember that this first equation is y, hence I've plugged in my y velocity there. And then for the x equation, I've plugged in my x component. And acceleration we had already started with, and we still have our delta times. So now we have made some progress. This is where having a strategy is really helpful. Again, we're trying to find range in terms of other values where those values don't include delta t. If it could include delta t, well, I'm already done. But we don't want delta t in our equation, so we need to solve a different equation for delta t to plug it into this range equation, right? So this is where we're trying to go, but this is bad. We don't want that. But if you look, it's in the equation for y, and everything else in our equation for y can actually end up in our answer. So what we want to do is rearrange that equation for y to solve for delta t so that we can then plug in delta t into our range equation. So I'm using my y equation here. And one thing to note is this is almost like the quadratic equation. And sometimes I see students really go for that quadratic equation here. You don't have to. You can actually just factor out a delta t, right? And so remember that when you have a polynomial, this is a second degree polynomial. So delta t here is like your x, right? So if you think back to algebra, if you have a polynomial and you're able to factor it out, where x equals 0 is where it crosses 0. So either delta t equals 0 or this whole thing equals 0. Well, so if delta t equals 0, that's just your starting point. That's not very interesting. So frequently in physics, when you get two solutions like this, there is actually meaning in it, and you want usually one of them. There's a physical reason why you want one solution and not the other. In this case, you don't want the starting point. It's true that your, initial, that your height is 0 at the starting point, but that's not interesting. So what you want to do is set this second term equal to 0, and that will allow you to solve for delta t, right? And notice that you 
don't need to use the quadratic formula or anything like that here. It's just kind of simple. So you need to use those algebra tools to work through this. So I use this equation equals zero to solve for delta t, and I get 2 v naught sine theta over g. So now again, what we're doing is taking this delta t and plugging it into the x equation, since that was our equation for the range, but we couldn't have delta t in it. So now I come back to that range equation, and it's first term zero, so obviously you can drop that. Now, you need to actually keep those terms here. Again, this is where just simple little algebra mistakes can crop up if you're very focused on being overwhelmed by the physics and you're not just being careful in your work. So note that that's continued on. We've plugged in our delta t, and now you multiply those out. And now, this isn't actually the form that I originally showed you the range equation for, but this is a perfectly valid equation. Uh, you would not have any issue if you stopped here, though that isn't the exact form that the book, for instance, uses. And the reason for that is that there's a nice little trig identity you can use, which is that 2 sine theta cos theta equals sine of 2 theta. And this is a little simpler, since you can hopefully think through or sketch out what sine of 2 theta looks like. But I know if you just ask me what does sine theta times cosine theta look like, I'm going to have a really hard time drawing that out unless I remember this trig identity. So we can use this trig identity to simplify the top down to sine of 2 theta, and then we are left with the form that the book uh, provided that I showed earlier. So that's how we actually do this, this derivation. And again, what's important to remember, it's only true on flat ground. If you needed to do it at a different height, you could. You would follow this exact same uh, path, but you would actually just use a different initial and final height here. What that would mean is when you set up this equation, you now would have to use the quadratic equation um, because you would have two different non-zero times. One of your times would be negative, one of your times would be positive, and you would want the positive time.